Hi, I'm Kevin Paul, psychic and medium, with a passion to explain and educate the different topics that make up the mysterious world of the paranormal. Welcome to this special mystical quickie, the Ouija board revealed. You know, the Ouija board has an intriguing history. It originated in the late 19th century and it was officially patented in 1890 by three guys from New York. The board gained popularity during the spiritualism movement, which was a cultural and religious movement that surged in the late 19th and 20th centuries. Now, spiritualists of that time believed that it was possible to communicate with the spirits of the deceased, and the Ouija board was seen as a tool to help them make those connections. And as you all know, the board consists of a flat surface with letters, numbers, and other symbols. Game players would place their fingers on a small heart-shaped planchette, which would supposedly move and spell out messages from spirits. The name Ouija is said to have originated during a session using the board. When asked what it should be called, the board spelled out O-U-I-J-A. And when questioned further, it answered, good luck. This led to the name Ouija board derived from the French and German words for yes, oui, and ja. But we Americans say Ouija board, while the British speaker says Ouija board, tomato, tomato. Interestingly, the Ouija board became really popular during World War I when many people were desperate for contact with their lost loved ones. However, it has also faced criticism and it was seen just like it is now as a tool of the occult, or even witchcraft, and as a gateway to the supernatural. Now let's talk about why people either love it, fear it, or hate it. Well, those who like it and used it when they were young did so because it was fun. It included everyone arguing and accusing each other of moving the planchet. I'm sure you've heard it before. Stop moving it, or you're doing it. They were trying to have some fun, and most people like scary, spooky movies and stories and just getting scared at a Halloween haunted house sponsored by the local Lions Club. But those people who hate or fear it have said that they've had bad luck or scary experiences after using the board themselves, or they've heard scary stories from other people being grabbed in bed to an object flying off the shelf and across the room to electronic devices doing strange things even when unplugged. Now let me tell you what I think about the Ouija board, its purpose, my thoughts on the ability to communicate with spirits through the board, and best practices if you really want to use the Ouija board. In my opinion, what I think is really happening here is summed up like this. It's not the board, it's you. So. What do I mean? First of all, spirits can't do these type of things. They don't have that type of energy. And spelling out words is not how they communicate. They don't bring you bad luck. You bring bad luck upon yourself in a variety of different ways. I feel that sensitive people have unknowingly ritualized opening themselves up to communicating with the spirit world by using the Ouija board. And of course, this can be done without a game board too. Mediums like myself connect with spirits with no tools, but we do go through our own little ritual to open ourselves up to be able to communicate with spirit. Opening up means that you are allowing yourself to be sensitive to spirit energy, as we call it. The intention of a medium is to contact with a sitter's past loved ones and to provide the sitter a little reunion. We do this by providing evidence of who the spirit was when they were alive, about their personality, their hobbies, their relationship with you, their job, experiences you both had together, for example. And we do this to establish credibility, that I really have connected with your loved one, like your mother, father, brother, sister, friend, husband, wife, and so on. Believe it or not, People have been trying to communicate with spirits since the beginning of time, and it's even mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible, 1 Samuel 28. 
Saul enlisted the witch of Endor to summon the spirit of the deceased prophet Samuel. Now, isn't that interesting? Now let's get back to the Ouija board. What is the intention of someone who is using the Ouija board? Well, they typically just want to know if the spirit is there, ask a question and get an answer, and to probably get a little scared too, but not too much. So if you unintentionally or unknowingly open yourself up and are not trained to understand how to properly communicate and receive information from the spirit world, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Basically, you're not going to be able to communicate with spirit. How spirits really communicate and how you can receive information from spirits is an important future topic that I'll talk about. But basically, you can communicate with spirits through your dreams through professional mediums, and through your own natural abilities, which may include clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, claircognizance, and others. Here are my best practices when using and playing with the Ouija board. And you noticed I used the word play. The key is to have fun. Don't take it too seriously. I mean, did you really get all worked up playing with the magic eight ball? I don't think so. So don't get all worked up with playing with the Ouija board. And if you are determined to use the Ouija board as a tool to communicate with spirits, here are my thoughts on how to play this game respectfully and how to protect yourself since this game has really been energized or amped up with myths and beliefs. Number one, don't play the game in the dark with candles. Have the lights on. Don't play the game if you're really afraid. Be respectful when you use the Ouija board. Start with a prayer or proclamation of your intention and state your requirement for protection. Remember that the board is just a game to have fun with and spirits are unable to use the board to talk back. And finally, make sure you have a proper closing statement saying that you're disconnecting your energies and giving thanks to the spirit world trying to communicate with you. When you properly close with intention, then you have disconnected. Say something like, now is the time to disconnect our energy issues, spirits, and guides. Thank you and goodbye. And if you really want to communicate with spirits, contact a professional medium or develop yourself by learning about mediumship and get some training and do it properly. And as always, thank you for watching. Look for more of my exciting educational mystical picky topics on any of my social media sites. Subscribe and get alerts from my YouTube channel and follow me on my Facebook or Instagram pages. So, until our next mystical quickie together, take care of yourself in mind, body, and spirit.